Welcome to the Pro Wrestling Zone podcast. This is episode 14. I am Tiger Height. Yeah. That's Pina Gallery. <laughs> um, so the show is going to be a little bit different. So Yeah, well, before we get to the meat of the show, any big news this week? I feel like I should say yes, but I can't remember what it was. I didn't, I didn't see anything that was, like, mind-blowing. The most interesting story I read this week was, according to Forbes, WWE is going to be releasing a lot of superstars oh, I did hear about that. early next year. And I want that to be our topic for next week, where we discuss what superstars you think are going to be released by WWE. Okay, I mean... If you want to do a list. Okay, um, I mean, it's not it, it's not something that has been entirely confirmed. I'm not surprised about it. And I'm not either. Um, um, I hope I hope they do. And But I thought it was interesting coming from a place like Forbes. You would think that, oh, well, it comes from this wrestling site where it could be fake. But no, it comes from Forbes. And which, uh, that, that, doesn't, known... that does not give credence to the validity of the uh, argument of, of or the anything. Argument. Right. But, but at least it's coming from something that's more, I guess, I guess mainstream. The tr- yeah, something that maybe they do a little bit of journalistic integrity. Maybe, but it yeah. is Forbes. Anyway, so I mean, other than that, there wasn't really anything no. that was mind blowing. Um, the next pay per view that's coming up is going to be um, the NWA Into the Fire, and we're doing a watch party. Um, I modified our Patreon a little bit. If you want to, it's uh, $30 a month, and you get to watch with us every single pay-per-view that we cover. So, um, NWA, WWE, NXT, AEW, all of that. All of those pay-per-views for $30 a month. Like, come on. You have to. No, you also get to sign merch, and you get to be part of the Discord, and there's a lot going on. So if you want to, there's going to be a link in the description, but it's going to be patreon.com forward slash majestic P, as in Peter, or production. So Excellent. uh, With that out of the way, with the shilling and kind of the news thing out of the way, WrestleMania Dream Cards. It's coming up. We've been talking about it for a while. Um, And if you want to let us know about that stuff, and maybe we'll even do like a poll on whose WrestleMania card is better on the consensus of everybody. So well, here, yeah, of course, mine is going to blow his out of the water. But what we're going to do you. is we're going to announce the matches, and then we are going to talk about the storylines that are that lead up to those matches. Right, and this was a criterion that we used, and if you want to, you most certainly can and let us know in, at Twitter or in um, Instagram. I always have my DMs open. Minimum. Of 10 matches and maximum of 12 on the main card. And you can have up to three pre-show matches if you wish. NXT matches and titles are included. There must be an Undertaker match. Only current members or able body members of Legends. So if you want to do like a dream match, make sure that they're not dead. Right. Uh, no roster switches whatsoever. All champions are current to this present day right now. I'm not going to go through the list. You can look it up. And obviously, we're going to tell you. And then there is interpromotional matches are fine, but try not to have, like, big championships or anything like that, even though I broke that rule immediately. Of course. Um, This is going to be – our list is going to be in order. And the other matches, like the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and the Women's Battle Royal, must take place, but these can be on the pre-show – if you want. So if you want the right. Undertaker match on the pre-show, you can have the Undertaker match on the pre-show. Because <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, I'm going to take the reins for Peanut Gallery, and I will let him do the first one, and I will do the second yeah, so round. We'll do, um, so what we'll do is we'll do the pre-show, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll do the main card after we come back from break. Oh, okay. So it's like, oh, this is my first match. This is your first match. Right. Oh, okay. So you, so we'll do that in alternating. Then after the pre-show is done, because we have the same number of pre-show matches. And then we can do like then we can, we do, can like do like a little a we break. can do like a little debate or something. Right. And blah blah blah. Right. Right. And so after the break, then we'll do the main card because I think we have the same number of main card matches as well. Right. Let me start off with my first pre-show match, and it is the women's battle royal, and I have the winner to be Liv Morgan. Interesting choice. Because Liv Morgan is set to debut a new look, 
it may or may not be connected to the fiend itself, but it's very much like that. It has that Ooh. character to it. Ooh, that'd be kind of interesting. And and I think that WWE, when she returns, WWE is going to give her a push. Probably. That is why I chose her to win the women's battle royal match. Kind of, kind of like boost her up, even exactly. though this is on the pre-show. It's still WrestleMania. Right. Okay. Um. All right. So let's do your first match. So my first match is the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. With a caveat, it's not just for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal trophy, but it's also for the twenty-four-seven champion. And I have Buddy Murphy to win. Huh. Interesting. Um, really give him a really good boost, and I would say that this is the launching pad for not only to have the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal like a thing again. Right. The twenty four seven champion needs that little shot in the arm of somebody new. I think it's it's kind of getting a little stale, and they're not doing it as frequently um, as they were in the past. Right. This is the twenty four seven champion. Have it defended twenty four hours. Give us. I want to see tons of content with this 24-7 champion if you want it to be a 24-7 right. champion. Huh. And they're super big in with, him, with Buddy Murphy right now, and he's such a great athlete, and this would just be that kind of kick in the pants that I think he needs to really put him on a whole new level. Right. All right. Well, good, good. Now, the second match I have on the card is uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross are going to defeat the Kabuki Warriors for the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. Okay. And, of course, you know, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross are actually a great tag team. I think people will be behind that. Just give it a little more credibility. Give that title a little more credibility than it has in the past. You don't think them, you don't think the Kabuki Warriors as champions and their heel gimmicks I, are so great, too. I, and, see, here's the good thing about this, too, is Alexa Bliss just returned. Right. It gives it gives them an opportunity to really build a big match. I mean, I would argue that this might even be main card contender, but again, you had I to make sacrifices. You had, had to, to make, make sacrifices. sacrifices. So this one kind of was at the bottom of the totem pole um, as far as the match goes. But I think they can build a great rivalry, something that lasts months. Out okay. Of this. Yeah. I mean, I guess uh, my second match is the women's battle royal. The winner of the women's battle royal. Faces the SmackDown Women's Champion for the belt on the main card, and I have Charlotte Flair to win. People may say, oh, it's just a predictable. Yeah, I'm sorry. Nobody can touch Charlotte Flair right, right now, other than the other horse women, but they're already doing something, um, except for Banks, who's just kind of, I don't know, she's wrestling, she's not. Right. Let's have some consistency. That's why I said uh, Charlotte Flair. Really easy choice. I really couldn't think of anybody else right. who deserves this opportunity okay. for the belt. Um, because I have something for Becky later. Right. All right, perfect. Um, so my third match, my final match on the pre-show is going to be the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, and Drew McIntyre is going to win that match. Okay. And that's because I think Drew is kind of on a he's, – he's kind of in a slump right now. And I think he's kind of lost in the shuffle. He was teaming up with people. He did this. He did that. He was never, he never, he, you know, he hasn't shined in a while. Right. And so I think giving him an opportunity to shine, since I already have someone else winning the Rumble, I thought just give him this as a, not as a consolation, but just give him that WrestleMania moment. I guess. As, as a singles competitor. Okay. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, my final pre-show match is going to be for the NXT Cruiserweight Champion. It's going to be Leo Rush versus Kushida. And I have Kushida to win the Cruiserweight Champion from Leo Rush at this. Okay. Um, I feel like these two would have great chemistry. Yep. Um, a really good, fast, high-paced thing in the pre-show. Really get the crowd going before WrestleMania is always good. Yep. And Kushida is, you know, one of the most legendary junior heavyweights in the last 10 years in New Japan. And this would be a great way for him to really take the reins yeah. as the man in the cruiserweight division come... Right. In the future. Okay. Um, but that's that's just what it is. Leo Rush just kind of feels like a filler. I don't like him as champion just because I think he's a little shit. Um, but that's, you know, being – that's not being biased at all. Uh, yeah. I mean, really, that's about it. Are you um, sure you don't want to go through any matches as a part of – No, we'll do that in one fell swoop. We'll make that like a 25 minute. or Okay, whatever. we'll just do a longer yeah, one. So we'll, we'll do a longer one. Well, we'll go into a break right now. When we come back, we're going to go through our main card with this we'll same – We'll have a lot more going on with this one. We'll have a lot of backstory for you. Absolutely, so, yep. Stay tuned. Absolutely. Eight.
And we are back, and we are back with our Dream WrestleMania card based on the criterion from part one. And now we're to the main card. This is the meat and potatoes. Nice. So I will start okay. with my first match. It will be a tag team match based on a big controversy earlier. Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley with Corey Graves facing off against The Bar Ooh. with Mar Ranallo at uh, like next to them. And I have Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley to win this okay. match. Um, I feel like I, I had the same consensus of we need to build Drew McIntyre back and maybe him and Lashley, they could build off of each other. Right. And they're not on – no, they are on the same brand. And this could lead into a possible Raw Tag Team Champion contendership. Right. And I think that would be a good team. Yeah. Um, you know, a good starting thing with a big story that they can really build off of. And um, that's just kind of my reasoning for this match. That's, that's an interesting choice because I, too, have a bar match. <laughs> interesting. Go ahead. Um, so, anyways, my first match on my dream card is Shinsuke Nakamura wins a triple threat match and retains the Intercontinental Champion against Mustafa Ali and Shorty G. I thought you said it was a bar match. No, I didn't say it was the first match. I just said I had a match with the bar oh. in it. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, so the reasoning for this is because WWE's really high on Shorty G and Mustafa Ali. Shinsuke Nakamura, it, he, they only make those two better. I mean, <laughs> can, I guess. can you imagine? It's, it's, not, it's not supposed to be a complicated storyline-wise match, mm -hmm. but it's a great show opener. Tent, it, you know, the, the Intercontinental Champion tends to be a great opening match it kind of gets the crowd palette going okay yeah you have you have a lot of great characters with shorty g and his greco-roman with ali and his charisma with shinsuke nakamura with his strong style then you got a little bit of Sami Zayn in there just to spice things up a for, little for bit. some shenanigans <laughs> and and so that's kind of my reasoning for it um shinsuke nakamura retains because i think that you know, after after his loss at WrestleMania, I think he really hasn't had a chance to have that moment. Right. You know, where he is victorious and on top. So hopefully that gives him some caveat, possibly, and even staying a little bit longer with the WWE. Who knows? Right, 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 right. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go on to my next match, and it's a dream match that was teased before. I have John Cena versus Velveteen Dream as the second match of the night, and I have Velveteen Dream to win. Um, There is an obvious thing with Velveteen Dream. They love him. He has pulled off nothing but great matches. He has a charisma bite. And I think if they build him right, Velveteen Dream could be the next John Cena mm -hmm. um, as a part of the man. And it's like of any person to have the man status, it is this guy who is freaking our age too. Yeah. And this would be a great match too. Right. Uh, both very strong both have a um, bodybuilding thing. You, how could you see this storyline though develop? Um, you know, I could Velveteen see... Dream comes back maybe, and and John Cena is like, I want to challenge. It. Or how do you how do you see this happening? What I feel, I mean, okay. So do you remember when John Cena faced Daniel Bryan yes. at SummerSlam? Yes. Um, the powers that be let John Cena choose his opponent. Okay. Um, he chooses Velveteen Dream. Okay. Because he has been super high on Velveteen Dream. Mm -hmm. uh, Velveteen Dream, um, you know, becomes that Daniel Bryan esque person of I'm a I'm like the heel more of the, like the gritty heelish one, but in his own flamboyant way. Right. Um, maybe put him do through some big matches during Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Um, really start building him, and I know that goes against the draft, but at the same time, this is WrestleMania, this is a dream match, this is something different. Right. And then, at that point, John Cena is already established as the man. Velveteen Dream is a person who has to prove that the choice that John Cena made of him being the opponent Was is the, right, the right one. So he starts racking up some big W's, big moments on every show, getting him super exposed, up until WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, and I think people would be super behind Velveteen. I don't think John Cena would have a problem losing to Velveteen whatsoever. No. And this would just put Velveteen Dream, like, right there. Right there at the top. Perfect. Well, here's my next match. Um, 
Sheamus and Cesaro, the bar, defeat Randy Orton and King Corbin. Now, there is a little bit of a story behind this match. And a, okay. <laughs> so Sheamus made his, I guess, vignette returns. Mm-hmm. He said that he wanted to clean the place up, according to his words in that promo. Yes. Um, Cesaro is kind of on that same path. Um, I think he there is it's interpreted differently, but I think the goals that Sheamus and Cesaro have are the same. So it's only inevitable that they come together again right. and really clean things up. And who better to clean up than fucking King Corbin and his fucktourage of fuckingness? Okay. He's 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 about he's about as charismatic as sewage. Um and then, you know, of course he's buddies, buddies with I don't I don't know exactly the nature of the relationship with Randy Orton. I, I think mean, Randy, Randy, Randy Orton's Orton. on Raw now, so it's right. not like but he was a right. person that was aff- affiliating with Corbin at the time. Right. So I think that their relationship is rocky, but I think Randy Orton can add that depth of of something to King Corbin's entourage, more or less. Maybe. Um, really build up. It really builds up um, uh, Baron Corbin. Um, maybe not as a, a gimmick, but maybe as more of a legitimate star if he's in a match like this with someone like Randy Orton. Um, and then the bar, of course, the bar puts on great matches. And so right. I think that three strong superstars with one not quite a strong superstar, I think that's going to really elevate King Corbin. And even though it's going to be a losing effort at the end of the day, I think that it's going to be a good, it's a it's a non-title. There aren't a lot of gimmicks to it. It's just going to be a match okay. that they're going to have. It's going to be the culmination of a rivalry. Okay. Um, my third match, very interesting choice, by the way. Yeah. Um, my third match is, it is a Randy Orton match, but it's Tommaso Ciampa versus Randy Orton. Uh, re- there was this whole thing would start on Twitter. It is really building on there. And this is a match almost very similar to what Cena and Dream is, except um, Tommaso Ciampa is an anti-hero. Where he's still going to do heel shit. He's still going to try to... I think Tommaso Ciampa is going to do the opposite of what Velveteen Dream did. Okay. Where Randy Orton doesn't respond to Ciampa until like the last month before WrestleMania. Okay. Like, I challenge you, doing all this stuff on Twitter. Randy Orton says nothing. And then all of a sudden, Randy Orton shows up on NXT and fucking kills him with an RKO a bunch of times and attacks him. That's how you build that. And then from there, then they start jaw jacking. Then Randy Orton starts acknowledging him of like, I am, I am where you were, but I'm just, I was just better. I was just like 10 years ago or whatever. Right. Almost like what Randy Orton and AJ Styles had where um, it was all about the indie thing. Right. And I don't think a lot of people realize how indie-rific the psycho killer was. Right. And I think that bringing that out would be a really good thing. Yeah. Um, and then, yes, Tommaso Ciampa wins because, you know, Randy Orton's starting to slow down. We need to establish big stars. Right. And you can say it yes or no, but Randy Orton is a 13-time world champion, two-time right. Royal Rumble winner. He won his tie- first title at 25. Right. Which is just bonkers at the time. Bonkers. Yes. Um, third generation star. He knows what he's doing. And I think that um, Tommaso Chamber doesn't need help being carried at all. But I think these two would have great chemistry of their styles. Yeah. So a good save, very methodical, kind of a, you know, some big brutal shot matches. This That's kind of what this is. Okay. Uh, what's your third? My third is Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Big E, The New Day, versus AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. The New Day is going to come out on top. Here is the background to this match. The background to this match is that in in Japan, the Bullet Club was big, or the OC yeah. as they are now. Yes. And in, in, in some form or another, the leader and two of his buddy buddies are now on WWE. Okay. Their their approach to everything is more of a serious nature, serious tone, beat em up kind of thing, you know, attack from behind, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the New Day, at, at the same time, in WWE were the most prolific and one of the most popular tag teams and arguably still are. They have a different approach and style to wrestling. Mm-hmm. And so I think that this match serves as a good clash to kind of see who is the best. 
Okay. Is it the OC or is it the New Day? And they meet on an equal playing field on the biggest stage of them all to kind of settle that score. But the lead up to it is all about how the New Day wasn't serious enough and that really kind of builds up some heat, mm-hmm. I think, for for the OC to really get them to be a little bit better, you know, a little bit more established in the eyes of the WWE fans. Because I still think that it's sort of alien to them that there are these other companies, and so I think it kind of brings that into the limelight. And I think it's just another way for WWE to show off their big dicks and say, "Yeah, we got all the stars." <laughs> I guess. Um, so I think the New Day are going to come out on top. Everyone loves the New Day. The New Day are going to have a the big... The New Day are going to win? Yeah. Okay. And and the reason for that is because that will just make this a feel-good match. The crowd is going to just... Yeah! Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> so, with that being said, I mean, I don't know why I was so surprised because my OC loses as well. Ah. But this match is a eight-man tag. Mm-hmm. It is a winner-take-all. Okay. Every other NXT championship is on the line. So the OC, and I'm adding Finn Balor to it. AJ Styles to NXT champion. Finn Balor to North American champion. And then um, Doc Gallows, or Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson going for the tag team titles against the Undisputed Era. Okay. And I have the Undisputed Era to win. So what's the buildup for this? Basically... Um, is a part of indie rific in a very much the same way. Who is the best? It's more of like the dick measuring contest. And with NXT, where um, Finn Balor actually kicked Adam Cole, that's the launching point for this entire rivalry. Okay. Um, where they start coming in, and you know, Styles and them, they attacked Undisputed Era during the build yeah, of Survivor that's, Series. That's true. Boom, 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 boom. You put these two together Bullet Club versus Undisputed Era. And it's like right there where it's like two leaders. Adam Cole was a person in Bullet Club at one point as well. So they're all linked somehow. Okay. And that is the thing with this match where they just keep attacking each other, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, we're going to have this big there's, there's no There's no normalcy to it. It's no. all just backstage or it's Yeah, there's no the normalcy. It's, 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 all, it's all backstage. It's all social media. It's all – and then, you know, random attacks outside. Right. Okay. All right. Um, And so with that – I'll go to you. What is your fourth match? Okay, so my next match here is uh, Rey Mysterio and Dominic defeat Samoa Joe for the WWE United States Champion. Here's my rationale for this. Samoa Joe comes back from injury. He is now involved in the uh, U.S. title scene just because of this whole thing with Dominic and Rey Mysterio. Samoa Joe can gather some serious heat because he is known for attacking people's families. Oh, wait. Um, Rey Mysterio's kid son is now being more prominently involved in wrestling, and now Samoa Joe's like, you're not very good. Samoa Joe beats the bloody shit out of him, and uh, Rey Mysterio enacts revenge, but it's a handicap match. So Rey Mysterio and Dominic are going to win this match, um, and you know, there's there's another match that is also uh, going on later on tonight, but I'll explain that part to it uh, a little bit later on. But I think okay. that if Samoa Joe can get back from injury soon enough, I think that he'll go right after Rey Mysterio because he sees it as an easy target. Okay. And um, I think that's, you know, and, and he sees the target too in Dominic. You know, if, if he attacks Dominic, then Rey Mysterio is distraught. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes sense. Um, I feel like I mean, I'm not going to say anything. I think it's stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you should. Again, there's a part two to this as well, so we'll wait for that one. Right, okay. Uh, my next match is Charlotte Flair versus Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Um, not really much of a build with this. Charlotte won the Women's Battle Royal. Um, to why the Women's Battle Royal is number one contender for the SmackDown Women's Champion, Bailey openly mocks the importance of the battle royal okay and uh she's criticizing the battle royal for just being that a just a battle royal and nobody is doing anything with it right now the, whoever is in charge at the time mr mcmahon or whatever and or they announce it on social media that the based on the comments that bailey has made towards this battle royal 
the winner of the Battle Royal this year will go for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Okay. Um, you know, Charlotte Flair's, Charlotte Flair's choice was not, like, a big thing. It was just that she she is just the safest person. This is a WrestleMania-caliber match. Right. We need to have some kind of realism with this, and I'm not going to put Carmella to win. I'm sorry. Go and wreck somebody else's house, bitch. Uh... I'm sorry, that was a little bit bitter. <laughs> uh, but Bailey wins. Okay. Um, the reason for that is Bailey beats the Battle Royal winner. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's still like, oh, I'm still the champ. Puts huge, massive heat on Bailey. Right. Shenanigans. Um, you know where Charlotte gets injured during the Battle Royal with like her arm, her leg, or something, and right. Bailey and Sasha Banks just take full advantage and be like, "Oh, Charlotte Flair is going to come back with this." No, one-sided domination. Right. Where Charlotte comes out, blah blah blah, gets attacked, chair shot to the knee or whatever. Bailey hits her new face buster thing and wins. Right. It's like, and it has to be a decisive because right. Bailey needs. To, Bailey is building back up her credibility, and this would be a big way to do it. Just kill Charlotte Flair. Yeah. Um, that's mine. All right, perfect. Um, so my next match is Keith Lee versus Adam Colbebe for the NXT champion. I'm not going to go as far as to say that Keith Lee wins the Royal Rumble. I don't think he's going to win the Royal Rumble, but I think that Triple H, for some reason or another, is going to give him a shot at the belt. And I'm going to have Keith Lee winning just because not only does he have a great showing on NXT, but based on his actions at the uh, Survivor Series as well, that big push he got in front of the more mainstream crowd, mm -hmm. he's, he's going to get over. And I think right. it's going to be another one of those feel-good matches. Um, you know, based on this, I do anticipate that the Undisputed Era is going to uh, devolve and kind of go into chaos during this WrestleMania weekend because I think it's kind of running its course, so to speak. Um, but, um, you know, Keith Lee, I think, is a great choice for Adam Cole to go up against um, just because I think there's a lot that can be brought to the table. There's there's a semblance of unfinished business, um, and I, I think it's I think it's going to be a good a good match kind of right there in the middle before we kind of get to the bigger matches. OK. All right. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, good. Yeah. All right. My sixth match. This one is for the intercon. Jesus Christ. Hang on. Okay. For the Intercontinental Championship, it is a triple threat match, just like yours. It is Shinsuke Nakamura versus Daniel Bryan versus Pete Dunne. Okay. It, you can't say that that match would not be just incredible um, based on their style. Strong style, British, and very technical. Boom, boom, boom. And it's like, oh... Daniel Bryan and Shinsuke Nakamura is a dream match that they're probably going to build to for the WrestleMania come 36. And or 37. Pe or whatever. Well, no, this is 37. They're going into 36. Are they? No, they're going into 37. No. Uh, they're going in 36. Oh, they are? Oh. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure. You have an iPad. Oh. Well, but. I, <laughs> I just put WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> You're stressful. So, uh, I have Daniel Bryan to win the Intercontinental Champion at this okay. point. Uh... The basis on this is Nakamura and Daniel Bryan get into their program, and Pete Dunne just comes out of nowhere and says, you know what, we've seen this match before, this is too tiring, let's spice it up a little bit. Uh, giving Pete Dunne that big push, Okay. maybe he wins a match to be inserted into this, to where, you know... Uh, Basic, or Pete Dunne injures Sami Zayn, something like that, right. to where Sami Zayn is not in the equation whatsoever. He's not out there at all. It's right. a just a bar burner triple threat match. There must be a winner, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. There has to be a winner, and that's why it's a triple threat. Okay. So, you know, there's no disqualifications, no count outs. You have to pin your opponent in the ring or make them submit in the ring to win. Okay. You know... Um, the, the possibilities of this match are endless as a part of weapons and submissions and good technical 
Um, maybe, you know, some great three-person chain wrestling. They can make that work. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, this is a dream match in its own scenario. And I think Daniel Bryan, being who Daniel Bryan is, ha even though he's not a world – he's not going for a world champion. We'll get to that later. But – he will elevate this intercontinental belt more than it has, so this would be a great, great match to do so. And in the placing, kind of in that same realm, this title feels important. Right. So that's kind of why I did it. Okay. Well, my next match, I know this is the only match that we have in common. I know that yours is a little bit later on, but Roman Reigns defeating The Rock, and I think you have this one as well. Mm -hmm. If my storyline is different, of course you can kind of input yourself, your own story into it, but what I see is I see Roman Reigns, it's kind of like that John Cena situation with The Undertaker. He's not on the card, he's calling out The Rock, he's calling out The Rock, and then you know, if there's, if there's a show or something that traditionally gets low ratings then the rock returns at that show and there's a lot of reruns and stuff like that and a lot of money for wwe um i think that the rock is going to answer it because i think that he's expressed interest in wanting to perform with roman reigns and of course they're they're part of the same family so why wouldn't you want to do that to elevate one of your own to a status that is, you know, the problem is, is they always feel like Roman Reigns needs to be in a championship picture around this time. I think that this is a great opportunity for him to have a good rivalry without being in the championship picture all okay. the time. And so far, his champion, his his non-title um, rivalries have kind of been lackluster. They, they haven't been very well booked. And I think that putting Roman Reigns in a spot where he doesn't have a WrestleMania match, he fails to win the Royal Rumble, he he doesn't get the number one contendership, nothing like that. He's not involved in any major rivalry. I think it gives him an opportunity to really um, kind of step up his game um, on, on that big stage. So that's kind of what I have. Okay. Uh, my seventh match is Samoa Joe versus Keith Lee. Uh, the justification of this is um, Samoa Joe, it, it's more of a jealousy factor that he doesn't want to say, but it's clear. It's like, oh, Keith Lee is getting all of this attention. This should have been me, basically, but with just two big burly men. Mm -hmm. That's the premise for this match, and that is it. Um, you know, no number one contendership, no kind of anything, and I have Samoa Joe to get over on Keith Lee. Okay. Because I think Samoa Joe would benefit from this win than what Keith Lee could do. Okay. Um, based on how they have been booked and how they've been received and all of this stuff. So, yes, Samoa Joe wins seventh match. And I don't like to call this a sleeper match, but my next four matches, this is going to be the reason why. Right. All right. Well, here's my next match. Bray Wyatt defeats The Miz and Daniel Bryan for the Universal Champion. We're already seeing this rivalry unfold. I think that the rift between Dan well, for at first I think Daniel Bryan and The Miz are going to work together and try to defeat The Fiend. But I think The Fiend is going to get into both of their heads. They're both going to have not only a reason to kill each other, but also to get back at the fiend they have their reasons and it's going to be a very what what this match is going to, this is going to be a psychological match more than anything it's kind of going to it's going to kind of be like those Undertaker matches in the 90s mm. where he is part of the Ministry of Darkness and blah, 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 blah. And there was a lot of psychological things going on and you kind of felt that. I think that this match is really going to have that kind of feel, those complex emotions, the kind of stuff that it's not stupid, stupid stuff, but it's like... You know, it's kind of like Inception or something. It's, it's kind of, you know, it, there's there's going to be a lot of different um, emotions going on. Uh, the Fiend is going to get into these people's heads. And the Fiend's doing a great job with Daniel Bryan. And I think that putting the Miz in there as well is going to extend that. And then I think it gives a new dimension to the Miz and Daniel Bryan's working relationship as well. All right. So it's going to be a great match. The Fiend, of course, is going to win. And that's pretty much what I have for that match. Okay. Uh, my eighth match, this is last woman standing for the Raw Women's Champion. It's going to be Becky Lynch versus Ronda Rousey. And I have Becky Lynch to win. Um, 
So basically the premise of this is Rhonda comes back at some point in time. I'm going to I'm I'm going to probably have her come back and win the uh women's royal rumble and get this opportunity that way. Um with that being said, the premise of this is this match has not happened yet. It was going to happen at the you know the SummerSlam a couple of years ago, it just didn't happen um, because Becky Lynch got hurt, and they had the triple threat match. Becky Lynch pinned Ronda Rousey. They can build on that with the win of the Royal Rumble, and the reason for no pinfalls, no submissions is going to be the last woman standing. No disqualifications, no count outs. You can knock your person out, but they have to stay down for the full thing of ten. And I think with Becky Lynch winning, this will really bring her back to where she is. Ronda Rousey doesn't need to win. Right. Becky Lynch probably will need it more now more than ever because she's starting to fall flat. Yeah. And it's like the reason for that is that she doesn't have any people that could threaten her as a part of right. credibility like, like she, or anything. She is, she is at the top of that pyramid, and it's, it's a pretty, pretty uh, bottom-heavy one. Right. Okay. So, yes, uh, Becky Lynch wins. <laughs> Um, really brings her back to that, and uh, that's it. All right. Well, here's my next match. You know how you said that the Samoa Joe Rey Mysterio story was a little boring? I said there was a part two. Well, this is part two. It is going to be Bobby Lashley versus Cain Velasquez. And here's the story behind it. Cain Velasquez and Rey Mysterio and Dominic are like, they're they're a family. They're not, well, you know. They're they're like they're like buddy buddies like they're sleeping in bed with each other. Um, Bobby Lashley um, gets off of a pretty mediocre rivalry with Rusev. No one cares about it, and Bobby Lashley needs something. I think he he needs to rebuild his credibility essentially, and I think that him and Samoa Joe would work great together because they're both big guys. They're mm-hmm. both very athletic guys. Bobby Lashley is not such a great talker, but Samoa Joe is an awesome talker. Samoa Joe needs Bobby Lashley to ward off Cain Velasquez. Okay. Because Bobby Lashley is, because, you know, three on one is kind of hard, but three on two makes the odds a little bit better, especially with someone like Cain Velasquez around. Um, and so I think that also, too, both of them being professional fighters, it gives a little bit of a different dimension. Okay. And I think it's something, because we haven't seen it before, because Bobby Lashley only fought in Bellator, and Cain Velasquez was UFC. So I think it's also one of those things where uh, maybe even some fighting personalities want to see it because, like, ooh, this is something different that we've never seen before. Right. Let's give it a shot and see what it looks like. Okay. And I think putting them in a match like that, I think that now that rivalry doesn't seem so boring. There's some dimension to it. I guess. With I guess. And Velasquez and Bobby Lashley. <laughs> I guess so. Um. So are uh, good. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Um. For the United States champion, Rey Mysterio versus Nia Jax. Uh, you know, with the Royal Rumble thing where Jax came in and, you know, Nia Jax is so imposing. And Rey Mysterio, you know, was one of the principal people who attacked her during that Royal Rumble match. And this would be a history-making match. For the first time in a very long time, a one-on-one for a championship, a woman and a man. And like I said, history right here, and that's why it's so high up on the card, but I have Mysterio to win. I think he should have a lengthy reign with his belt. Um, Nia Jax is getting to the point of being a good wrestler for it, but I think she needs to be on a totally different level. I think there's a different standard to what there was in the 90s. Um and that's kind of why I say no for her to win this belt right now. It could be in the future. Maybe Nia Jax competes with the men at this point in time right. instead of going for the women's championships. Right. Um, but we'll see. But this is kind of like that first little breaking down the barrier match, and I think people would be totally okay with it. Yeah, absolutely. So my next match is CM Punk defeats Seth Rollins. Now, um, WWE has 
been it has been confirmed, but there are rumors out there that the WWE is trying to get CM Punk to a part time contract that does just WrestleMania and just the Saudi shows. If that comes to fruition, Seth Rollins can establish himself as a heel, a major heel, by continuing to attack the fans, members of the roster. This is Seth Rollins' big non-title push. Because again, just like with Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins' um, feuds without a title in the picture were just lackluster at best. They weren't very good. And I think a rivalry like this, where he gets involved with someone who is returning to the ring after so many years out, is the perfect opportunity for him to not only build his credibility as an actual heel, but also to solidify you know to really kind of put that that match over the top okay um they're two very technical wrestlers um it's, it's going to be a pretty good match okay yeah all right um my next match my 10th match is roman reigns versus the rock i have roman reigns turning full-blown heel rock is you know he does a match at like the royal rumble or something um, where maybe they're in a tag team match. It's like, oh, I want to work with them, but Roman Reigns attacks The Rock instead. And huh. that sets that up, where Reigns becomes, against a mainstream beloved figure like The Rock, mega heel status. That is literally the opposite of what I had. Right. I was going to establish him as a top baby face. <laughs> no, I was going to go top heel, where and Reigns wins. Reigns will beat The Rock. Okay. And then solidify himself as a gigantic mega heel because that is what the people want. They want to see Roman Reigns be a bad guy. And I've seen Roman Reigns as a bad guy, and he was awesome. So this would be a great thing for him. Okay. There you go. That was it. Perfect. Well, my 10th match is The Undertaker defeating Sting. This match has been teased for many years, and I think that... Oh, know, a couple of decades, not yeah, a big deal. I think that this is one of the last chances they will be able to have a match like this. I think that Sting is almost right to the point where he can medically be cleared for one last match, and you know that they want to save that match for The Undertaker, who is also nearing that age where he is going to pretty much retire. Um, like I said, this match should have happened a long time ago. Um, it should have happened back in 2014. Um, but if they can get... Uh, you know, The Undertaker versus Sting at Mania, I think that would be a great... It's not the main event, but it's definitely one of those big matches on... It's like the big poster match on the card, you know? Right. <laughs> so, uh, first time ever one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know how this goes. It's another psychological thing. I think a lot of it's going to be done on Titan Trons or if they're talking in the ring or something like that. There, there won't be a lot of matches or anything for either of these two leading up to it, but it's be a lot of mind games. Because you really don't have to. They've already, they're already established. Right. You don't need anything to build this match up. You can literally just have this match on the card and people will just fucking buy it. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Um, um, I my, don't. I oh. don't expect this match to be very long, but if they do it right, then it's going to be a great. It's it's going to be a it's going to be a good. Uh, it's it's, it's about it's about the moment, not right. about the technical. Exactly. Obviously, um, uh, my second to last is going to be Brock Lesnar versus Lars Sullivan for the WWE Championship. Um, I have Lars Sullivan to win the Royal Rumble okay. and face Lesnar. Um, basically, the premise of this was Lesnar was really impressed. Lars Sullivan just starts killing people. Lesnar really doesn't show up too much leading up until WrestleMania, up until like the last night. And then they just start doing Haas shit because, you know, th this is like a really easy thing to book. You don't have to book it really harder than this. It's like we want to see this match. We know the backstage story that Brock Lesnar only went down to the Performance Center twice. And both of those times, he wanted to work out with Lars Sullivan. <laughs> And I have Lars Sullivan to win and become the WWE champion, establishing him as the next big thing, basically. Okay. All right, perfect. Well, my second to last match is also a WWE championship match. But instead of Lars Sullivan, I have 
Kevin Owens defeating Brock Lesnar for the WWE Champion. Okay. And there's not much to say about Kevin Owens. He's on a real hot streak right now. He is adored by the fans. Everybody loves him. He goes up against Seth Rollins. You know, like, he's he's kind of, like, in, in cahoots, like, with Seth Rollins. Like, really, they're rivals right now. Mm-hmm. But I think that I think that after this rivalry is said and done, Kevin enters the Rumble. He wins it. And then he goes on to face Brock Lesnar for the WWE Champion. Um, if if you want to kind of get the two rivalries intermixed, I could see Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins in the meantime uh, attending to some unfinished business for CM Punk comes in. Um, but, you know, we kind of get to that place when we get there. And, um, you know, Brock Lesnar and, and Kevin Owens, I think two big guys going after the belt. There we go. All, All right. Good match. Um, my, my final, final match, match in the main event, event for the Universal Championship, Championship the, the Fiend Bray Wyatt, Wyatt versus, versus The Undertaker. Undertaker. Um, I think The Undertaker at least deserves one more opportunity for a championship of some kind. Um, I would say that The Undertaker presents that legacy championship that he had. Yeah. And almost like a custom belt for custom belt. Right. This is the universal championship. Okay. Let's have them all on the line. Boom, boom, boom. Three belts. The blue, the Wyatt, and the legacy. And I would say The Fiend beats Taker decisively like one-sided boom 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 kind of makes up for the ball being dropped with uh Bray Wyatt in the Undertaker right um where let's be honest Bray Wyatt should have won that and he should have been the person who broke the streak right um that new face of fear thing kind of comes back and it's like I'm going to establish that I am the person to replace you uh, that, that is my that is my my dream WrestleMania from. When did we decide to do this? It was like Tuesday or something. Yeah, it was Tuesday. So yeah, from Tuesday, kind of making those. Obviously, if I had hindsight and had a much wider range, um, I could have done a lot more. But with the parameters, and that's kind of why we did parameters. Um, with the parameters in check, this is what I came up with. Okay. My final match, of course, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Bailey, and Sasha Banks defeats Ronda Rousey, Marina Schaefer, Jasmine Duke, and Shayna Baszler. There isn't a lot to say about the build up. Well, there isn't a lot to say about why this match is happening. This match is kind of. It should have happened last year, but it didn't. And I think that with Ronda Rousey hinting that she is going to step away from the ring, this is probably one of the final opportunities for this match to happen. Um, so what will happen is Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, they're they're kind of buddy buddies. Bailey and Sasha Bank, they're buddy buddies, but they're heels, so like they're they're against each other. I think that they will form an uneasy alliance just because Ronda Rousey, Marina Schaefer, Jasmine Duke, and Shayna Baszler are all on the same page. Um, it just takes Ronda Rousey to return. And then we need to figure out how to get Charlotte, Becky, Bailey, and Sasha on the same page. Um, at this point in time, um, I can imagine either one of them winning the Rumble, like one of the one of the four that aren't the champions winning the Rumble, or um, you know someone from NXT winning the Rumble. Uh, but they're they're not going to put any titles on the line. They're not going to put any Royal Rumble anything on the line. It's it's literally just going to be about the pride, the the moments, this match needing to happen, mm-hmm. and um, you know who knows where Ronda Rousey will be after that. So this match, it, it just needs to happen because that match is going to sell the fucking show. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I. I mean, I'd pay sixty bucks for yours. I'd pay a lot more for mine, but it is what it is. Um, let of us you will. <laughs> uh, let us know what you think. Who has the better WrestleMania card? And if you haven't, follow us on any platform that you're listening to this on. And uh, we will be back next week. We're going to talk about kind of what we're going to do for the show earlier. And I'll make the announcement on my social medias. So go ahead and follow those. Uh, I will obviously do that and um, become a patron. Because we'll do the watch parties. You get some cool signed merch and... 
uh, we'll stuff. We'll go from there. Right. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and always be majestic.